presence of the Lord tonight. Let's stand to our feet and begin to worship the King of kings and Lords of lords in this place. I dare you to open up your mouth and begin to give him the best praise possible that you begin to tell him, thank you, God, for bringing me to this place, God. Thank you, God, for bringing me to your presence, God. Thank you, God, for giving me the freedom to worship you in spirit and in truth tonight, God. We worship you, God. We give you all the glory tonight, God. Have your way in this place, God. Have your way in this place, God. Holy Spirit, move. Move in this place. Move in this place, God. In every corner of this church, Father God, we ask that your Holy Spirit move. We ask that your Holy Spirit move in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We don't get tired of worshiping you. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to lift up your hands and begin to worship your God. Begin to connect with your God. Begin to talk to your God. Begin to allow God, begin to allow the Holy Spirit to move within you. Hallelujah. I don't know how many came to have an encounter with God, but tonight I came to have an encounter with my God. I came to see him face to face tonight. Hallelujah. Have your way, have your way, God. Have your way in this place. Have your way in your, this place, God. I want to see your glory in this place, God. I want to see your glory in this place, God. I want to see life transformed in this place, God. I want to see you in this place, God. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to worship. Begin to worship. Begin to worship. Begin to worship. When you worship, things have to change. When Jesus steps in the room, things have to change.
that we're coming back to you back to your presence God
God. God begins to call out to us. And he sees us coming. And sometimes we get so depressed because the struggle seems to have overcome us. But if you only knew that you were a work in progress, you don't have to have it all in order. Just come back to God. Just come back to the Father. And I hear this song you're singing, crying out, run, child, run. Father, I am returning. I'll say where I belong. And I hear this song you're singing, crying out, run, child, run. Father, I am returning. I'll say. Running, running, 
Jesus. I don't know about you, but this song brings to my memory when I had to run back to Jesus. When I had to run back to Jesus. You see, God will always make a way when there was no way to run back to Jesus. Amen. Welcome to the Outside Church. Hallelujah. Where we declare that the heavens are open in your favor. Come on, someone. Can someone say, in my favor? Woo. Thank you, Jesus. The church looks amazing. The church looks amazing. Hallelujah. If there is someone here for the first time, can you simply just raise your hand? We just want to recognize you as our VIP guest. Do we have a visitor? We have one visitor. Welcome to the Outside Church. We bless you. We have another visitor over here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad that you are here tonight with us. TLC, how do we welcome our guests? Hallelujah. We welcome you. We welcome you. You may go ahead and take your seats at this time. Man, today when I woke up, I put on my worship music and I began to worship God. And God, since this morning, has had me in worship mode. Um, but we also had an amazing day. We baptized four souls for God, for Jesus. And as you are here, we just want to recognize those ones that were baptized. We have Petronia Parker. We have Taylor Parker. Marshall. We have Isaiah Bonilla, and we have Alexis Escobar. Let me tell you, we had an amazing, amazing morning. It was so funny because while we were baptizing, they were, it was raining. And we kept on saying, you know what, it's double the blessing. It was double the blessing. So we are truly, truly blessed and honored um, to have them. They've made the best decision of their life. We know that as of right now, it is a new starting point for each and every one of them. And we thank you guys for, for being there, for whoever was looking online. We just thank you guys so much. And thank you for joining TOC, for the ones that are looking through social media. Thank you for staying plugged with the outside church. Now, if we can go ahead and stand to our feet, we're going to go ahead and collect our tithes and our offerings at this time. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many are feeling the presence of God here tonight? How many are feeling the presence of God here tonight? Praise the Lord. I'm excited for what God is doing for that powerful worship. And I know that there's a powerful word coming through as well. Amen. And I'm in expectancy to receive from the Lord direction, revelation, and empowerment. I'm ready to receive direction, revelation, and empowerment. Is anybody ready to receive, receive that today? Praise the Lord. Let us pray for those who are about to give to the Lord, amen, what he has given unto them, amen, with a cheerful heart. Father God, we pray and we bless the offerings tonight, the tithes and the offerings, all those who continue to support the vision of this house, amen, bless them in an abundant way. In an abundant way, God, just open up the windows in their favor. Be their provider, God. They trust you with their finances, God, and they put forward your kingdom, and they put your kingdom first before all and anything, God. So I bless you, God, and I ask you to bless them in a mighty way, God, even those who can't, God. Be their provider. Open the doors for them, God, so they can be able to be blessed and be able to finance your kingdom as well. Father God, multiply the seeds, amen, of the humble giver, God, 
God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Praise for your blessings. Give it on to the Lord. Amen. If you have the app, you can download the app to give to the Lord. Amen. Or you can give. Amen. At the end of the service on your way out. We bless those who, who financially bless us. Amen. Even, though, even those who are online. Thank you, God for blessing this church and being a provider. Amen. We are excited. Amen. How many are ready for the word? How many can stand to the feet? Amen. To their feet. Let us receive. Amen. Our youth pastor, Pastor Brandon Martinez. Amen. With a word tonight. How many are ready? Come on, make some noise. Some celebration. Amen. And we pray that the Lord use him in a mighty way. Like he's using each and every one of you guys, amen, for his glory and for his honor. Amen. Pastor Brandon, may the Lord use you. Amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Amen. How many are excited to be here? Amen. Listen, I came and I came to preach today. Is that okay? You know, I was, uh, before you said, it's always so nerve wracking, right? You, you want to deliver a word that feeds your soul and, you know, God, get me right, you know always have the worst stomach ache. Too much information, right? But it's always so beautiful when you're on your way to church and you just know, you know what I mean? Right? I don't know if you ever had that service that you're like, Oof, this is the one. This is the one. Well, I feel like this is the one. And if I'm the only one here that believes that, if you believe that today, I just want you to give God, just give God a praise. But we the worship team. Just set the atmosphere on yourself. Say, I'm about to eat. I'm about to receive God. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me direction. Now, if that was for me, that's good. But if, if you're here to praise the king of all kings and you said, I came, I don't care how pretty I look. I don't care if my makeup falls out. I came here to praise the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Am I the only one that came today to have some church? Did I come today to have some church with you? I'm talking about that church that's uncomfortable. The one that makes you want to get out of your feet and just begin to praise him. The one that you say, neighbor, just give me some space. I've been going through hell and back and I'm here to praise the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. It's beautiful to praise because it sets the tone and it sets the atmosphere. And I believe that it opens the floodgates of heaven and now we're ready to eat. So I want you to just sit down for me and, and let's get right into the word because I'm expected of today um, believing that God's going to do something tremendous. You know, I was thinking about the last time and I hope um, many of you were here when we talked about how God was after your tongue and how your response can affect your scene. This week we're talking about how God wants your throat. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I want you to kind of, <laughs> oh man, I, I wanted you to kind of regurgitate that in your system and say, you know, yeah, my tongue was powerful. It resurrects things, you know, it, it brings to life. But while I was thinking about that, I said, God, I want to go deeper. And that's where he took me. I said, where did my response come from to begin with? Where did my response stem from? How did I become so bitter to begin with? How did I become so disappointed, so distant, so weary, so introverted, so isolated? Some of you feel far from not only society, but you feel far from people, from God. And you're wondering, how did I get here to begin with? Why was my response, why did God have to go after my tongue? What made my tongue so vile? What made my tongue want to speak death rather than life? How did I become so bitter and where did that stem from? Where did my responses come from? You guys know I love to talk about marriage in every of my sermons, so I want to I wanna add something in here, but I want to first find out how many people have been married for five years and under? I want you to raise your hand. If you've been five years and under, amen. Okay, what about, what about 10 years? 10 years and under. Wow, there you go. What about 15 years and under? 15 years and under? Okay, there you go. 20 years, 20 plus years. How many people? 20 plus years. Oh, there you go. We got our passes. We got to lose back there. Awesome. We're going to pray for extra strength for you and patience. That's a long time. I love my wife. I do. That's a long time, baby. <laughs> but it's a beautiful thing about that commitment. But I want to talk real quick about expectations in your marriage, right? Don't worry, this isn't a, a marriage counseling service or anything like that, but I want to talk to you about the expectations that every man had before getting into marriage. If you're about to be married or you're thinking about marriage, this is kind of your idea of what marriage is every day, right? You kind of believe that this is what you're going to see 
uh, every night, right? When you get married, right? Nobody? Where's some of my men out here, right? This is what you're going to see every night, amen? You're like, oh, I can't wait to get married. Girl, I bought you something nice, right? Oh, I'm the only one. Oh, y'all holy. Sorry, my bad. I forget y'all speak in tongues. My bad. Sorry, Abraham. But if you're married and experienced, you know that what you're actually going to see every night. Hold on, hold on. There's more. Hold on, hold on. They can't forget the shower cow, right? <laughs> Babe, do I look cute? <laughs> it's just the reality, right? You have this expectation that every night she's going to cook for you. Then you're at the McDonald's drive-thru. It's just a reality. Okay? We have all these false pretenses of what marriage is going to be like because we really don't know. We've, we've never been in that arena in our life, right? So we build these expectations. But as a joke, it, it's just not the reality, right? If you're experienced in marriage, you know, listen, I'm not wearing that. I'm not wearing that. Give me the flamingo shirt. That's what I'm going to wear. Okay? You guys remember your honeymoon? Amen. Good times. Y'all holding. I'm sorry. But I want to talk to you about a secret killer of faith, which is unmet expectations. Because your expectations can and they will influence your response. Unmet expectations is not something that you commonly hear in church. But you build these expectations that are not met and it is a secret killer of your faith and you don't even know you're under attack. Why? Because you created the expectation. Expectations are a strong belief that something will happen or it'll eventually be the case in the future. It's an inclined emotion because it's a hope that something will be accomplished the way you presumed it would be. It's an upward emotion. This is why you've heard the statement, uh, I had high expectations for this. It's because expectations are an incline. You're hoping for this, right? You're hoping that when you get home wives that your husband cooked for you, right? And then you open the fridge, there's nothing there. Right? You're an incline. You're expecting, right? So this is my expectations. And I want to ask you, if I fall from this altitude, do you think I'll be okay? I, I think I'll be fine, right? But if I fall from this altitude, okay, there's a little bit more of a risk. I might get a little bit more injured. But if I go to the very top and, I, and I'm at the highest I can, if I fall... We all can agree that I'm about to get hurt. So the higher I am, the harder I fall. The higher my unrealistic expectations are, the harder I will fall. And when you do fall, the injury that you sustain is paralysis. Why? Because now you found yourself in a ground that bitterness, hatred, revenge, unforgiveness is found in. Because you fell from so high, but you created the ladder to begin with. And this false reality you decide to live in, and when you're shot down, now you're on a ground where I'm just bitter, I'm just angry, I'm just distant. Why? Because my expectations were not met. I did not find Jesus up here. The higher I went, the harder I fell. And this ground, I like to call the devil's playground. Because at the ground level, you're easily influenced. Because your expectations, you won't know that your expectations is birthing out all of this. And now the devil will slip in and he'll begin to influence you saying, you see what happens when you climb? You see what happens when you hope and you believe? You see, he's never changing. She's never changing. Your circumstance is never changing. You see what happens when you went so high, you fell so hard. This ground level is dangerous. This is why many of you aren't coming to church no more. This is why many of you have trust issues. This is why many of you have built a fence of offense against people because you were so high. And when they didn't meet you on the other side, when they didn't meet your expectations, your unmet expectations, killed your faith it killed your relationship it killed your drive it killed your passion why because you fell hard you are injured you're you're facing paralysis some of you aren't coming to church because you had this expectation of God that isn't the reality of who God is 
It's the false one that you created. Some of you are thinking of divorce because you had an expectation that your man was perfect when in reality the biblical context tells me that all men fall short of the glory of God. So how can I expect somebody to be the superman in my life when the only person that never fails me, the only person that never forsakes me, has one name and one name and only, and it is Jesus Christ. Now if Jesus never fails me, come on somebody, you're acting like you're not hearing me today. Somebody give God a shout of praise and say God uh uh-oh you're about to do something this words for me somebody praise God like you're receiving this saying I didn't know he was gonna attack that part of me I didn't know you were coming for me God but maybe my unmet expectations is what's destroying me the devil's playground is affecting you but please understand I'm not saying not to have high expectations. I'm just saying to have leveled, biblical, accurate expectations. Because if we live in our expectations, then we evict reality. I know a lot of us have children, or even us growing up, how many have heard the three little pigs? The one who built houses, right? One built one out of straw, one built one out of sticks, one built one out of bricks. And the wolf came and he huffed and he, and he blew the house. That's cool. He huffed and he puffed and he, no, I'm kidding. But there's, it's actually a, a, a similar biblical story when Matthew begins to speak about the gospel. And you can find it in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27, talking about building your house on a rock. He says this, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. And then the rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it has been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came and blew against the house and it fell and it was a great fall. The same circumstance hit the same structured house, but the foundation was just a little bit off. One of the greatest factors, and please mind you, this is not just about marriage. This is about your relationships on earth, but you'll understand why it goes into God. One of the greatest factors of divorce and downfall isn't just finance, but it's unmet expectations. Because we build our own reality, and when someone doesn't respond accordingly or doesn't give the way we thought they were going to give originally, then we start getting angry, we start getting bigger, uh, bitter, and we start falling harder. That's called building a house on sand. Mm. And if this can happen in my earthly relationship, then it's possible for this to slip into my divine relationship with God. If I can do it to my husband, if I can do it to my boss, if I can do it to my wife, if I can do it to my friends, then this same unmet expectation, I'm sure enough to be doing it to God. When we find ourselves disappointed with life, it's because it's not because something in life has failed us, but our expectations of what life ought to be failed us. And in the same token, when we find ourselves disappointed with God, it's not that God has failed us, but our expectations of God has failed us. When mankind fails us, it's not about them failing us, but rather our lack of understanding that all men fall short, but we still heighten our expectations of what man is capable of doing. Y'all quiet. You, can't, you don't believe me? Let's talk about John chapter 13, verse 21 through 30. <laughs> this is probably the most awkward dinner they'll ever have. And it says this. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit, and he testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of who he spoke of. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at the table of Jesus' side. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking of. So the disciple leaning back against Jesus said to him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, it is he whom I will give the bread that I have dipped in. 
So when he had dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas. Then after he had taken the bread, Satan entered into him. And Jesus said to him, what are you going to do? Do it quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, that Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should be given something to the poor. So after receiving the bread, he immediately went out and went at night. So Jesus is at the table with his disciples, and he says, one of you will betray me. And that is probably the most awkward thing, because everybody's looking around. And he gives the bread to Judas as a sign that's saying, Judas, you are the one that's going to betray me. But Judas' expectations were not that. Because Judas expected him to always be faithful, always be there. Why? Because he walked with Jesus. He witnessed Jesus' miracles. He saw the capabilities of who Jesus was. He knew that he was the son of man, the son of God. So his expectations were too high. Believing that because I walked next to Jesus, I will never fail Jesus and I will never fall short. But Matthew 27 says something different. Because it says that when Judas witnessed that he was condemned and he saw what was happening to Jesus, he tried to return the 30 shekels back to the priest that he betrayed Jesus' information to. And the priest said, what am I going to do with that? And he threw the shekels onto the ground and said, I don't need that anymore. We got basically what we wanted. Jesus out of your life. Jesus out of the equation. Jesus out of the situation. And Judas could not handle the false expectation, so he hung himself. He hung himself because he did not understand. He could not get to grips with how high he was and how hard he fell. He said, how could I have done what I've done for 30 shekels that even the priest who gave it to me in the first place didn't want it back? Because the enemy, all he wants, he will promise you things and make the expectations sound so high and say, I'll give you this and I'll give you that. Just leave him. And then when you try to return what the enemy has gifted you, he doesn't even want it. Why? Because he took the one valuable thing in your life, and that's Jesus. He stripped you away of the one thing that he knows can actually deliver you, can actually save you, can actually heal you. But your expectations failed you. Judas couldn't handle the fall from the top to the bottom. Because he thought, I would never be in this place. I could never do this. I wonder where we are today when our expectations were shot down. When we struggle to connect truth with life, we must embrace the limitations of our understanding. And we also must embrace the limitless of God. Our understanding is limited. And if we can embrace that and understand that I'm not going to understand everything that God is doing. Everything that I expected my life to be at this point in time. I expected my marriage to be a little bit more solidified. I expected my job to be a little bit. I expected to be under this roof and not this. I expected to be here, but I'm not there. I expected to be at a place where I'm not today. When those unmet expectations come, we have to understand that our understanding is far fresh from God. Our highest thought is God's lowest. And we're trying to encompass this idea that we understand what God is up to, but we don't. And we can never. Because if God can fit in a mind of human, then he wouldn't be worth worshiping. He is the creator of all things. He is the creator of every autumn. He's the creator of nucleus. He's creator of the seasons, of the galaxies. He is too big to fit into your mind. Now think of this. How smart do you believe that you are? How intelligent do you believe that you are? Some of you may say, I feel very intelligent. Now place yourself in comparison to some of those who are in history as the most intelligent to have walked the earth. Now in comparison, how smart do you feel against them? Now to think that their highest thought is God's lowest, now this can give you a kind of an idea that you won't understand everything that happens. So stop climbing onto this false reality that you understand everything and this is how it's going to go. This is what God is going to do. I expect God to move in this way because when he doesn't, the enemy will use that against you to feel like God failed you, but God did not fail you. Your expectations of what God should have done failed you, but in reality, God did not call us to expect what he's going to do, but trust what he's already done.
not, you're not understanding me. God's not telling you to expect what he's up to. Just know that God is up to something. Now, if that don't get you excited, I don't know what to tell you. But if God is up to something, forget about my expectations. Forget about me trying to do it mathematically, trying to figure it out. My plans can be planned, but God's plan is greater. The plans that I have in my life, I could have it all planned out. I could feel like the change was going to happen by next week. But my expectations of God, the devil is using as an advantage to believe that God is distant from us. But the harder we fall, we forget to, speak, to understand that the gospel says that he is close to those of the hurting. So if I'm in the ground where I'm hurt, I am closest to God. But the devil will try to tell you that God failed you, that you fell short, that it's never going to happen, that change isn't coming, that God isn't doing something new. No, 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 no. That's just your mind creating a reality. But God's here to pop your bubble and say, I am who I say I am. I have a plan and all of my plans come through. My word does not return void. Listen, I could prove it to you. The disciples who walked with Jesus hand in hand witnessed his death and they thought that they were witnessing an execution, but heaven was executing a plan. So even if it's outside of the scope of your understanding, the scope of your understanding shouldn't be the measure of your faith am I talking to somebody today what I understand my what my oh my gosh what I understand what I can comprehend my knowledge my understanding shouldn't be the measure of my faith my faith should surpass my understanding I'm gonna say that again my faith should not be measured to my understanding because my faith should supersede my understanding I don't understand how God's gonna do it I, I can't put it into mathematical but I'm not gonna put myself high I'm gonna trust in God in the low I'm gonna say God I don't know I'm gonna keep it leveled I, I don't know how you're gonna do this I, I know that this has been my secret prayer but in all reality let your will be done that's why God says this let my will be done on earth as in heaven because if it's up to my will I'm gonna fall every single time but if I could just stand by my expectations and say I don't need a climb I've got God and he says that I've got a plan so I don't gotta climb anywhere I know that God is up to something now this kind of mentality will heal your broken wounds. It will heal you if you can understand this concept that you failed you. If you can get hold of that concept, you'll be liberated because the word of God is truth and truth is light. And when light enters into a dark room, darkness has to exit. So let this truth come into your life today and say, wait a minute. I'm crushing relationships I shouldn't crush. I'm cutting people off I should not cut off. I'm far from God when I should not because I'm bitter, I'm angry, I'm unforgiving at this moment. Why? Because I was so high and he just disappointed me. How many times have you ever been disappointed in your faith? Be honest. There has been things in my life that I expected God to have taken care of the way I measured it and it wasn't and I was disappointed and then the devil walked into my life trying to manipulate my disappointment and he tried to cultivate my disappointment and be distance. Because when you're disappointed, you're easily distant. Think about your relationship when you're angry with your spouse or you're angry with your neighbor, you're angry with your friends. You're not communicating with them. You're what? Distant. Because disappointment goes hand in hand with distance. So he will take advantage of you. Picture it like this. The moment that you fall, there's demons all around you running your way. <laughs> trying to manipulate your mind. Because where your mind goes, the rest of you follows. And if I can get you in the mind, if I can get you to believe in something that isn't a reality, if I can make you forget who you are, if I can make you drop your crown when you fall, if I can make you, oh my God, you got to be like the man in the gospel who says, what, naked I came into this world, naked I will come out. There is nothing you can take. You can take my both arms. You can take both of my legs. You can take my voice. But what you can't take away is what God has placed inside me. Somebody praise God like you believe it today. Somebody Somebody challenge the devil today say how can break loose and nothing will stop what God is doing yeah. 
The scope of my understanding should not be the measure of my faith. I want to say that so that you can really think about that when you leave this church today. I tried to understand it and my mind failed me. I expected this to be different. Do you think the disciples expected a crucifixion? But it was predestined by heaven. Did you expect that thing to happen in your life? But look where you are today. He supersedes because we walk in the natural and he operates in the supernatural, meaning he is ahead of us. His time, our timeline does not affect him whatsoever. He operates in heaven. There is a two, there is two reigns going on. There's two dimensions going on. God operates outside the realm of our understanding, outside the scope of what we can even put together. We don't even know what's all in the ocean yet. Come on, somebody. We don't know that the galaxies are expanding. We, we don't have the capacity to put God into our understanding. So today we come to praise a God that's beyond the measure of my understanding. Why do you love God? Because he supersedes all. Some of you came with broken expectations. Some of you have come with unmet expectations and that's disappointed you. But I'm here today as a man of God to bring a message that the God that you serve is an expert at breaking expectations. And I'll talk the God that you serve, that you're worshiping, is an expert at breaking expectations. Ask Moses, ask Abraham, come on, ask Jesus. God is an expert. He is an expert at breaking man's expectations. And he loves doing that because if he breaks your expectations, it could have only been God. So he will place you at a dead end. He will place you at a tight grip. He will place you to the closest that you can fall into and he will do this. So that you can understand that what is to be done can only come from God. What I need to be done that I'm praying about in my prayer life, I can only do and hand it to God. I can only just give it to him in my secret place. I can only pray about it and trust in him. Because the moment that you allow your expectations in, your trust and your faith are evicted. Don't replace God's ability with your disability of believing and understanding and trusting and having faith. Don't replace the fact that you fell. Don't replace the hand of God because yours is too short to do. The greatest part of why we're here as a church worshiping God is because he's all-knowing. He's all-capable. He's endless. He's the beginning and the end. He does things in our life that we could never even have the capability of doing so. So stop running. Stop being disappointed. Let go of bitterness. Let go of the things that didn't work out. Why? Because you don't even know what God saved you from. You don't even know what God is up to. Some of you want change right now, but you can't even handle the change, and God knows that. Some of you guys want things to be rearranged in your life, but you can't even juggle it even if God gave it to you. You're asking for something that you can't even control or hold on to. You're asking God for something that you can't even hold on to. And if God gave it to you, he would be an irresponsible big uh, builder. Because every construction site will build a building, but prior to building the building, they'll have a blueprint. And that blueprint will set forth a good foundation. Why? Because it doesn't matter how high the building goes, if eventually it's going to fall down. God won't place it in your hands until the foundation is solid. So that when you do build, the winds can come, the earth can shake, the ground, come on somebody. But nothing that touches your house can make it fall. I don't worship God because I expect something. I worship God because I know something. And what I know is that 2,000 years ago, the man named Jesus. This kind of truth breaks chains. This kind of truth gets you to run back to God like the prodigal son and realize I had everything, but I had nothing if I did not have If I did not have Christ, I had nothing. I don't want you to leave today with an emotional exuberance, a moment of, uh, of, of understanding and then walk out. This is something you have to do when you get home. 
What did I tarnish because of my unmet expectations? What ground did I fall on? Because then you could be the bigger person in restoring it. I don't have this, but the prodigal son we all know who ran off with all of the inheritance of his father and spent it all and was eating with the pigs and eating things that he did not have to because he was royalty. But the moment he realized that he didn't have anything, if he didn't have the father, he turned back. And what God did immediately or what his father did immediately was celebrate him. He celebrated the return of his son. And God is asking you to step out of your disappointment. Step out of your anguish and your bitterness. I know you're mad at me, but you're not justified to be mad at me. I know you're angry because things didn't play out the way you thought it was going to play out. I know you're angry because you thought you'd be at a different place by now. And I know it's hard to trust because trust is difficult, but you have to trust. You have to believe. That I am who I say I am. And if I did it for Abraham, what more shall I do for you? I am the same God of Abraham. I am the same God of Moses. I am still who I am because I am unchanging. You have to trust me. You have to let go of the unforgiveness in your heart that you've buried and you've treasured and you've held on to because it's the only thing that gives you closure. God is saying, let it go and let it resurface so that I can strip it away from you because by my stripes you shall be healed. You don't have to walk with those bricks. You don't have to walk with those chains. You don't have to walk with that weight. Run to me. Because the more freedom I give, you're able to elevate your worship. You're able to come back closer to me. And you've been desiring to, but your anger has replaced your desire. You've been wanting to. You've been yearning because all of man knows that there is a God. Whether you are atheist, agnostic, I don't care what title you've given you. Deep down inside, there is a mystery unfolding that all men know that there is a God. And all men are designed to worship. So somewhere inside you, I don't care how dirty you are. I don't care how deep you are. I don't care how far you are. Something is calling you back. You can run as far as the east to the west, the north to the south, but there is a calling inside you that you cannot ignore, whether you want to or not. Some of you are ignoring it out of anger, like a child, because we are his children. Throwing a tantrum because you didn't get the lollipop you wanted, but you didn't know that that lollipop was poisonous, just like the fruit on the tree. <laughs> Crying out to God because that man left you, but you have no idea that years later that man would have beaten you. Wishing that you had the roof over your head of a house, but you're in a house with AC when people in Africa don't even have a hut to stay in. But you claim to trust in me like a provider. You claim to trust in me like I will provide for the birds in the sky. What more shall I provide for you? If you trust me, then trust me. If you believe in me, then believe in me. If you got faith in me, have it like Job and say, naked I came in. Naked I... If I'm talking to somebody today that says, God, I'm sorry. God, my bad. Because you have my back and I did not have yours. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that the pride of man was placed on a throne in my life. I'm sorry that I got ahead of myself. I'm sorry that I got in my own way. I'm sorry. When's the last time you told God not a wish list, but asking for forgiveness? I said, God, I'm sorry. That I, because I did not get what I wanted like a greedy child, treated you like a divine vending machine stripped away from you and stopped worshiping and stopped cultivating a culture in my society. The time that you need the church the most, I'm far because I did not get what I wanted. And then we hear stories like Job, how could he have done it? When God took everything from him, he fell to the lowest capacity. But God entrusted him and told the enemy, go ahead, because this one will not turn his back on me. Are you this one or are you Judas who cannot bear the fact that he fell short? It's okay if that's where you are today because I've got good news. He is a forgiving, loving, relentless God who has been pursuing you even when you keep stepping away from him. 
Would you marry somebody that tells you that every day of our marriage I will cheat on you? But he still chose for us to be his bride. He still chose for him to be in our lives even though we fail him every day. But today is a day you found truth. Today is a day that you found a source of where that anger and that bitterness is coming from. Today, today is the ch day that change comes. Why? Because you're not just a hearer of the word, you're a doer. I challenge you today to go home and change something. And I guarantee you the moment you begin to change things and speak life and use the tongue that God was after, that all of hell will shake because you're finally standing back. I want you to stand with me. I want to pray over your life, and I want to pray a specific prayer. So if you could just bow your heads and close your eyes. Father God, in the time that we are facing, Lord, so many of us are distant. We're challenged. Things don't even feel the same, Lord, because we're injured and we're paralyzed. But God, I pray today that you break that, that the sons and daughters that you are calling back don't just walk back, but they run back, Lord. Lord, that they come back to you stronger than they ever have been. Lord, that repentance will liberate us, Father God. And I know that you're in this place because your word says that where two or three are gathered, you are surely here. Lord, and if you are here, then things aren't changing. God, today we choose to trust you beyond our understanding. God, today we choose that the measure of our faith isn't compared to our understanding, Lord. Today we trust in you, not by verbiage, Lord. Lord, but from our hearts, we say, God, I place it into your hands. Do something. And what I will hold on to is that you are doing something. I don't understand what you're doing. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know that you're doing something. And as long as I know that you're doing something, it'll give me the strength to carry on. God, today I worship you as a sign of trust. God, today I worship you as a sign that I'm placing it in the Father's hands. Today is not the day the enemy wins. The devil is a liar, God. I pray that you restore our hearts. I pray that you restore our passion. I pray that you restore our drive in the name of Jesus, God. That thing that we've been missing, I pray that you bring it back, God. That strength that we used to have, God, I pray we are stronger than Goliath. God, that strength that we miss, God, I pray that you bring it into our homes. The peace we once had the sanity that we once had God I pray for liberation today Lord Lord every demon that we're wrestling with God I rebuke it in the name of Jesus because I know your word says it's just by the utterance of your name demons tremble and shake I challenge every demon that you're wrestling with and I plead the blood of God Jesus I hear God saying that I found you and I found you in a room in your house that you did not expect to be found in. I found the root in which you are being used as an instrument of wickedness. You are no longer an opportunity for the enemy to slip into your home. Today we deconstruct your home that was built on the sand. And today is the same day that we built it on the rock. Because I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. I just want you to do something real quick. Just begin to raise your hand. Watch what God does. Hey. I want you to just lift up your hands. If you don't feel what's about to come, man, I feel a rain that's about to hit this home. I feel a rain that's about to hit this roof. I feel a shower of heaven about to come on. Somebody open up your mouth because tonight is different. You don't want to miss what God's about to do. Hey. There's a presence that's about to rain down. Hey. There's a glory that's about to touch you. Raise your hand as high as you can. Hey, shout out to Jesus. Here it comes, here it comes. Lift your praise. Send out a shout of worship.
the day of Pentecost. Hey, I feel like God wants to do something in the spirit today. Here I come running, hey. running, here I come running, come running, and I won't look back, that's no, your testimony, here I come running, running, this is the last chance you've got, come running, running. break out of your comfort here zone, I come running, running, hey. and I won't look back, no, I won't look come on. back, here I come running, is your season this is your opportunity let's lift up your hands right there where you are say I need Jesus again this is for an unsafe person that says I need Jesus are you in this building that say yes to the Lord say yes to the Lord say I need to be renewed tonight if God destroy all your expectations tonight and the Lord spoke to you. If that's you, raise your hands. Let me see the hands. Those who God spoke to tonight. If you need deliverance, if you, if you need prayer, if you need, hallelujah, a renewal of the mind, this is your moment. Say, yes, Lord, come. I'm coming back. I'm running towards you right now. The altar is open right now. Come to the Lord now. Come, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. To Jesus, hallelujah. Here I come running, running. Here I come running, running. Running, hallelujah. I won't go. Here I come running, running. Here I come running, running. Come on, rejoice. Here I come running, running. Here I come running, 
cross. Here I come. 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 Come on, rise up again. coming alive right now. Calling is coming alive. Purpose coming alive. Forgiveness being operated in your life. Redemption. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus over you right now. Making you whole. Making you new. Hallelujah. We establishing you right now. Hallelujah. All pretensions. All hallelujah uncertainty. All expectation broken. the room. 
pray forgiveness over your life. I pray restoration over your life. I pray a new beginning for you as of today. You're no longer the victim. You're no longer held hostage. You are free by the blood of Jesus tonight. Make it happen, Lord, in the lives of many here today. Hallelujah. Come on, just give the Holy Spirit one minute. One minute. Come on, just let, let, him, let him ride. Let him ride. Say it above us. wants to make things right with you tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Make things new, Lord. Make things new, Lord. There are people receiving right now on the altar deliverance. God is working a mighty, his mighty power, his mighty hands upon people right now. Allow him to break you, to restore you, to reform you, to establish you. Allow him to work in your life right now. Be transparent. Be be truthful to yourself. Don't let this moment pass you by. Right now, Lord, work. Work, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Holy Spirit. Come on, we're about to close. Let, let him do something. Let him do something supernatural right now. Come, come to the altar. Run to the altar. There it is. Come on. Holy Spirit is moving people to conviction. There it is. There it is. Surah Baba Shatakim. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. to Jesus tonight.
on honor the Holy Spirit in this year honor the Holy Spirit in this year give him your attention give him your time right now there's nothing better than the power of the Holy Spirit manifesting and moving in the building Give the Lord a hand praise right now. How many excited that the Lord is taking control of the services? The Holy Spirit is giving us space to work, to redeem, to forgive, to restore. Hallelujah. How many were blessed by that powerful word by Pastor Brandon? Come on, give it up for Pastor Brandon. I, I just need you to give me five minutes of your time. Turn on the lights for me. I know we've all been blessed, but we want to honor in this five minutes. Please, just five minutes, because I need you to all be here, because you, you need to honor them as well. We want to take this opportunity to honor our congregational care pastors here tonight as this is um, Pastor's Appreciation Month. Amen. And I'm going to ask for the pastors of these house, of the house to come forward. Pastor Len, Pastor Isis, Pastor Marsha, Pastor Chino, Pastor Brandon, Pastor Nicole. Hallelujah. Come on, give it up for them. Let us honor them. Come on, come to the front. Let us honor them. TOC loves you. The church loves you guys appreciate you guys come to the front i know we under the anointing of god but god wants to celebrate you as well today the church loves you 
Everyone here loves you. The young people love you. We are, we are Pastor, Pastor Erica, Pastor Jose. Come on, move over here more closer to the front, please. Come on, I know we're a little bit over time today, but we are, we're over time in the spirit. In the spirit, we are over time, amen. And these are our amazing, anointed, humble, passionate, committed men and women of God that are our congregational care pastors here. They are sowing into your children, sowing into your life, into your marriage, amen, into whatever is needed for the pastors of this church. And we thank them all, Pastor and I. And TOC loves you guys and appreciate you more than what you think. And this is just a little um, gift on behalf of the church for you guys. And there's nothing that we can give you to repay your service, your commitment, that honoring spirit that you show, and the attributes, the, the love, just the, the hours you spend in the, in the kingdom and growing this church for the glory of God. It does not go unnoticed. We see it all. And we pray that God continue to lift you up. We honor you guys and we pray for God to continue to use you, not only in TOC, but anywhere you go for the glory of the Lord, for your children, your marriage, your home, your job. Amen. That you find favor, grace. Amen. And that every seed that you sow into each and every one of us, God may give it to you back a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? Is anybody in this church grateful for this amazing group of pastors that we have in this church? honorable man and woman of God and we pray that they continue to be humble for the Lord consecrated committed and passionate to grow his kingdom so on behalf of TOC we love you guys and let us extend our hands and let us pray for them Pastor, come and help me just anoint them and pray over them let us close our eyes really quick and with this week we have Rafael that's going to close the service with a prayer but let us extend our hands for them now, and then we'll pray for all of us. Father God, bless them for them to continue to do their earthly work in their marriage and their job, but also the spiritual work that they do for your kingdom, God. Bless them, give them wisdom, peace, understanding, hallelujah, passion, resources. Amen. Bless their generation, their children, their seed, God. Bless them going in and bless them coming out, God. That everything they touch may be blessed. Open the doors automatic, God, as they ask for favor, as they ask for whatever they need, God. In the name of Jesus, give them words of knowledge, word of wisdom. Uh, use them in the supernatural, in the gifts of the Spirit, God. In, in, in prophecy, God. In healing, God. In, hallelujah, restoring your, your people. Amen. God, just give them, hallelujah, everything that they may need, the tools that they need to be more than conquerors and to be anointed man and woman of God for such a time that we are living, God. Give them boldness, God. Give them assurance. Let them stand on the solid rock, which is you, God, Jesus, and in your word. In Jesus' name, I pray this over them all right now, God. And the church of God says, amen, amen. Hallelujah. We love you guys and we bless you. Hallelujah. Come on, give them a praise. Hand praise. Hallelujah. Grateful that we are for each and every one of you guys. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. We love you. Amen. Enjoy the gifts on behalf of your church that loves you so much and are thankful for your life. And let's have Brother Rafael. They will be closing tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Unmet expectations. Wow. What a word. What a powerful word. Let's, let's give it up for our, our Pastor Brandon one more time with that anointed word. I pray that we, uh, we, re we all receive it and we apply it to our lives and let's take it back out into the world and, and let it manifest out there where it needs to be manifested. Um, it, wow, it just, it just hit me so hard, that word, because it's when we, when we rely on our own expectations is where we go wrong. See, we're supposed to be in expectancy every single day, but only in the Lord. Only in the Lord are we supposed to walk in expectancy. So uh, I thank you for that word, Pastor Brandon. So everybody bow your head, close your eyes.
Father God, I just thank you for allowing us to be in your house once again, Father God. As your church continues to rise and run back to your altar, Father God, I thank you, Father God, for your power and authority that you have placed in each one of us, Father God, that trust in you, that believe in you, Father God, and expect in you for, for greatness in our lives, Father God. May we continue to grow, Father God, in wisdom, Father God, in love, Father God, with your grace and your anointing. Continue to shower upon us, Father God, so we could take it back out into the world, Father God, and be who you call us to be, Father God. Vessels for your glory, Father God. As we depart here tonight, Father God, I ask your angels to go ahead of us, Father God, and just cover our homes, Father God, cover our workplaces, cover our schools, Father God, cover our nations, Father God. As we walk out, Father God, take us home safely, watch over our families and our loved ones, Father God. In your mighty name we pray, amen.